Another feature is the employment of skills coaches within academies. Currently in this country, there is no course or qualification for this type of coach. And it must be addressed. It must be addressed. We must surely be aspiring not for mediocrity, not producing players just capable of playing in the SPL, but players that are capable of getting this country back to being a force to be reckoned with in Europe. That has to be our aspiration. We need to open our eyes. We must open our curtains and realise that what we have been previously doing has not been working. <coughs> and that the importance of winning an under-12 academy game is insignificant. The real importance is how many of these young players <coughs> playing in that game are being schooled in a manner which can take our game back to where we all want. As a first team manager, my philosophy must reflect that of my academies. <coughs> the players should arrive under my remit with all the suitable technical tools. My job, most importantly, should be to develop them tactically and mentally, and to continue to fine tune their already inbuilt skills. And this type of scenario is not common in Scotland. <coughs> Successful countries always have an identity to their style of football. Brazil, Spain, Holland, Germany. But although they have this, sorry, <coughs> but all, although they have always had a style of play, that style of play has evolved as the demands of the more tactical game has evolved. I ask you this question. What is the Scottish style of play? Because I don't know. I don't know. Has it evolved? And is it conducive to success at the top level of the modern game? The answer to that is no. We must change. We must change. There is, there is without doubt an apathy and monotony hanging over our game and we must take action to reinvigorate it. I am, as many will be aware of, an advocate of a larger top flight league. David's glad to hear that. <laughs> With the right consideration and creativity, it can address many of the fundamental issues, both short and long term. For the short term, we must address one concerning problem, falling attendances and what is influencing them. How do we get the lifeblood of the game back through the turnstiles? Because football, after all, is theatre. Are you the support of suffering the effects of the economy? Less disposable income? What about pricing? The cost to take you and your family to the game? Excessive? Kick-off times and the days on which games are being played. The monotony of playing each team on four or more occasions. These are issues that all must be addressed. I could stand and speak to you all day regarding issues concerning our game. Topics such as a more stringent financial governance of our club's finances. The development of an independent executive board whose purpose would be to make decisions on behalf of all clubs in the best interest of Scottish football. The list goes on. A minute, Stephen. A minute, Stephen. <laughs> A minute. A minute? You're in it, are you? OK. But finally, the game of football 
in this country, I believe, suffers from a lack of respect and understanding. Respect and understanding from our media. Respect from clubs to supporters. And supporters to both clubs and managers. There has to be a greater degree of transparency and understanding on all issues and we must work together. The game is littered with opinions. But many of these opinions are formed without the appropriate experience, research, understanding and relevant information. These opinions can be like a cancer <coughs> and they continue to suppress our game. Football on the continent has evolved enormously over the last 10 years. Well, our game stands still. Thank you.